Hey guys, in this lesson we will deal with example of natural selection in the topic evolution. This is presented by me, Yogita Khandelwal. So in our previous lesson we have talked about the theory of natural selection and in this lesson we are dealing with the examples of natural selection that supports its theory. So first is industrial melanism. So this phenomena was studied by Kettlewell and it comes from England. So this phenomena was is basically of England. So before industrial revolution, the dull grey forms of peppered mod that is Biston bitularia was dominant. So uh, before industrial revolution, all that we have factories and all that stuff. So before that had happened, so uh, there was a variety of moth that was grey form or uh, it has white so it is white, white wings so it was Biston bitularia that was grey and white wing moth so it was dominant while Biston carbonaria that as black moth was rare so Biston carbonaria is dark winged or melanized moth so uh, between these two varieties Biston bitularia was dominant and this was rare now what was the reason because predators will spot a moth against a contrasting background so before industrial melanism set in all the industrialization has occurred thick growth of almost white colored lichen covered the trees so uh, since lichens flourish in uh, non polluted area so they were there before industrial revolution because there was no pollution so the uh, Trees were covered with white colored lichens. Now because of white colored lichens, uh, the moths that were white winged or grey, they were uh, able to protect them from for predators by camouflaging while these black ones were not able to protect them and they were clearly visible. So predators will spot a moth against a contrasting background. But after industrialization, there were more dark wing moths in the same area. That is the proportion is reversed. Now what happened after industrialization? The proportion was reversed and now and then we after we have more dark wing moths rather than white wing moths. This is because large scale smoke which got deposited on tree turns turned them black. Now, uh, pollu uh, after industrialization, pollution occurred and so there was no growth of white colored lichens and there was instead, there was deposition of smoke and sooty in the trunks and these trees become black. Now, the con background was the black and in this black background, black forms flourished because now they were not clearly visible rather gray varieties become susceptible because against that background they were clearly visible and the predators will ab was able to spot them. Lichen can be used as industrial pollution indicator since lichen doesn't grow in a polluted area so it can be used as industrial pollution indicator. Here, uh, so what happened here moths that were able to camouflage themselves that is hide in the background survived. Thus and this is also supported by the fact that an area where industrialization did not occur for example in rural areas the count of melanic moths was low and that of grey or uh, white wing moths was high. So before industrialization we have grey moths and after industrialization we have more number of black moths. So those which can better adapt survive and increase in population size. So uh, if we have a mixed population or we have different varieties so those which can better adapt will survive and increase in population no variant is completely wiped out. So we have seen in industrial melanism before industrialization and after industrialization we have both varieties of moth. None was completely wiped out. So no variant is completely wiped out. Evolution is non-directional process in terms of determinism. So basically evolutionism is not a directed process. 
it is a stochastic process based on chance factor or mutations that means uh, it is a random process uh, it and it is based on chance events in nature and chance mutation in the organism now see this is a picture this is a black winged moth and this is white winged moth or gray moth so here we have contrasting white background so this is easily visible while they are able to camouflage so predators will spot them and uh, will they will uh, they will become low in number and while when there is black background they are able to survive and they will, and they will be spotted by predators so this is an industrial melanism that was taken from england now moving to next example favism so it is a disease which is caused by deficiency of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase that takes uh, that is a part of pathway pentose phosphate pathway now because of this deficiency hemoglobin gets denatured and is deposited on cell membrane so uh, if this uh, enzyme is present this enzyme is a source of nadph and we have glutathione reduce so this variety of mechanism which activates peroxidase which remove peroxide radical which can damage rbc membrane so it uh, if this enzyme is present it helps in removal of peroxide peroxide radical that damages rbc membrane but now here it since it is deficient there is uh hemoglobin gets denatured and is deposited on rbc membrane and thus there is hemolysis of rbc and because of this hemolysis in these rbc malarial pyrimidine cannot complete its life cycle person get protection from malaria so in spite of the disease the person is protected against malaria so this is an example of natural selection similarly next is drug resistant drugs eliminate pathogens become ineffective in the course of time so we have variety of drugs uh, that we used to eliminate pathogens but it become ineffective in the course of time because those individuals of pathogenic species which can tolerate them survive flourish to produce tolerant species hence uh, this an evolution by anthropogenic action these resistant organisms or cells are appeared in a time scale of months and years or not does not take centuries so this is a kind of evolution similarly excessive use of herbicide pesticide etc has only resulted in selection of resistant varieties in a much lesser time scale next is sickle cell anemia and malaria in heterozygous condition the cells containing abnormal hemoglobin become sickle shaped so individual homozygous for sickle cell anemia die at any early stage while the heterozygous individuals uh, the rbc become sickle shaped but malarial parasite cannot complete life cycle thus protected against malaria so in these individuals uh, when an rbc becomes single sickle shaped it kills malarial parasite effectively so that these individuals are able to cope with malarial infection much better than the normal person thus the process of natural selection thus maintains the abnormal form of hemoglobin along with the normal form in a region where malaria is common so these are the few examples of natural selection that supports it so that's all for this lesson thanks for watching